Okay. Again, this is our Beyond Open URL webinar. This is the first webinar we've had for libraries in quite some time, so we're happy you're here. Um, just some housekeeping before we get started. The phones are muted, and but um, if you have any questions as we go through the webinar, please feel free to ask them in the questions pane in the right panel, and I will ask them either as we go through the webinar or I can do some catching up at the end. We will be sending around the slides and a recording of the webinar when we're done. Um, All right, let's get started. So if you're not familiar with Crossref, we are a not-for-profit membership organization for scholarly publishers. Uh, we were founded in 2000 with 12 publishers as members, um, and our initial goal was to fight the link rot problem by helping our members assign persistent identifiers, those being DOIs to scholarly materials. So if you assign a DOI to a journal article, for example, and that journal article moves to a different platform or to a different URL, the DOI link will still be persistent. Um, at this point, in 2017, we have over 8,500 members and we're still growing every day. Um, our member organizations are from a range of countries all around the world, but they vary greatly in size. They have differing business models. Um, they provide different types of content um, hosted on all different uh, kinds of platforms, and they publish in a whole host of subject areas. Our voting members are publishers, but our data is used behind the scenes by a number of organizations, including libraries. In the past, we've been known as a DOI provider or the DOI provider, um, but we're, while we're proud of our position as a mature persistent linking provider, the metadata we collect is becoming more relevant to scholarly communications in general. Um, libraries provide and rely on thorough and accurate metadata to provide provide access and help with content discovery, and we do the same. Um, metadata can provide a lot of persistent, we, persistence, um, and we think of ourselves as having 90 million metadata records that include persistent links, not 90 million DOIs. So, as I, as I said, our metadata is used by many organizations in the scholarly um, communications community. Um, a number of organizations import our metadata to power their services or to enrich their own set of metadata. Um, we're a primary source of scholarly cross-disciplinary metadata worldwide and certainly one of the only free sources. And as we move beyond just bibliographic metadata, we find that the data we collect is being used more and more. It's very relevant to what's going on in the community right now. We provide metadata output services through our REST API as well as a subscription OAIPMH service. So some people do pay to retrieve our metadata, but um, they pay more for the delivery than the actual metadata. Um, all of the metadata available through our REST API is, is currently freely available to everyone. And I'll get talk more, more in detail on that in a bit. So library ILS vendors were among the first non-publishing entities to make use of our metadata. They've really helped us become a part of scholarly communication infrastructure. This has been primarily through using our open URL resolver. Um, not long after we were founded, we began making the metadata we collect available, and it was quickly adapted to use with library link resolvers to connect, help connect users with the appropriate copy, that of course being the copy of content they have access to through their library. Um, if you don't deal with this directly, OpenURL is a protocol that takes elements of a citation, such as author, first page, title, and retrieves matches in an OpenURL compatible database. Our OpenURL resolver sees a lot of use. It runs behind the scenes here at Crossref and on the library end is part of most link resolvers. Um, link resolvers use OpenURL to retrieve metadata and DOIs from Crossref, which they then use to in rich their own metadata to help your patrons discover and retrieve content they have access to. So I don't know if the appropriate copy problem has been fully solved, but um, at this point, link resolvers interact fairly seamlessly with Crossref. So what metadata do we collect? Our metadata is provided to us by our publisher members. Uh, we have our own metadata schema they must comply with. 
We don't touch or correct the metadata in any way when they send it to us. Generally, this is a good thing unless they send, um, send us bad metadata, which you know is an ongoing problem with anyone who uh, deals with metadata feeds. Um, we try to keep that to a minimum. We have active channels with our members to encourage them to correct any problems we uncover. Um, we have some minimal requirements for metadata in the validation sense. Um, all records must have titles and publication years at this point. You may run into the occasional BUM record that has been, hasn't been updated since 2002, but those are rare. We really only have a handful of those. Um, we have some requirements um, in the, if members don't provide this metadata, they're not meeting their metadata obligations sense as well. Um, we require that they send us all bibliographic metadata for an, an item, like a journal article, a book chapter. Um, they need to send us all of the authors. Um, they need to send us ORCIDs for the authors if they collect them. Obviously, we need things like page numbers, ISSN, ISBN, all of that good stuff. But as we evolve, we're really adding more and more non-citation metadata. We're really trying to capture and connect everything surrounding each scholarly item. Um, our members can provide and distribute the reference lists for the articles they register with us. They can send us data about who's funded the content they're registering. They can send us text and data mining license information. Um, the information about whether something has been updated or corrected or retracted. Uh, we collect abstracts and we're beginning to collect data about how all of these different items in our database are related. So we're using these new types of metadata to build new routes and bridges to scholarly objects in a number of ways. Um, we're building bridges through established and new identifiers like DOIs, ORCIDs, and even ISSNs and ISBNs. Uh, we're connecting funder, funders and grants to research outputs through funding data. Um, we're connecting uh, supplemental materials and data sets to journal articles through explicitly declared relationships between items. And we're also making connections through our Crossmark service, which allows members to include information about updates, retractions, and clinical trials. Um, we collect this metadata about what's going on with a particular journal article or book chapter, but we also enable our members to embed that information in their article in a standardized way through our Crossmark service. Um, Crossmark gives readers quick and easy access to the current status of a piece of content. With one click, they can see if the content has been updated, corrected, or retracted, and they can access valuable additional metadata provided by the publishers. So it works this way. A publisher includes a Crossmark button where their content is hosted. A user can click on that button and they get information about the status of the item. In this example, the article being viewed has a correction, so they can view the correction. There's additional information there as well. Um, there's information about the authors. There's, a, there's the funding information is presented very clearly. Um, and we also allow our members to include optional data like a peer review status of an item. Um, we're also collecting and displaying information about clinical trials using Crossmark, which is a, a great way for um, researchers to discover related content. Um, about a year ago, we began curating a list of registered clinical trials, and we've assigned DOIs to them as identifiers since there are uh, very few clinical tri trial identifier formats out there. When publishers include the metadata for their clinical trials in their Crossref deposits, we're able to link those trials to other related items. Um, and we do that uh, in a user-friendly way through the Crossmark box for the article being viewed. It's also available through our metadata feeds, um, which helps re researchers discover related resources. So we, before we move into our APIs, I wanted to just go over some basics. Um, Library users most often use our services to add DOI links to references. Um, we've added a few new tools over the years, but we still get questions from libraries about older legacy systems, so I just want to um, set the record straight and introduce people to some of our um, more commonly used tools briefly. Um, there are two user interfaces recommended for matching DOIs to citations. We have a metadata search interface 
which is good for querying or browsing for DOI links. Um, it can also be used to import um, DOI um, citations into someone's ORCID profile. And we also have something called the Simple Text Query Form, which is good for populating a reference list with DOIs. Our metadata search interface can be used up to look up DOIs for a citation. Um, it can be used to look up the metadata for a DOI. Um, you can enter a reference, and if we have a record for that item, it most likely will be the first match, but that's not a guarantee, so it's, you know, it's kind of like um, any other discovery service, you need to evaluate the results closely. If you're not searching for a specific item, you can enter in a portion of a title, a specific term, an author name, an ORCID, ISSN, grants or award numbers, and get results. You can also include or exclude terms. It's a, it's a pretty simple inf interface, and its purpose is to connect the community with metadata records, connect, connect metadata records to ORCIDs, and to identify the DOI for an item. It's not really a discovery service. Um, some people do want to use it that way. I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, so just to show you how it works, you plug in your search terms and you re can review the results. After you've entered your search terms or identifiers, you can see um, on the left-hand column there's some basic facets that you can sort by. You can limit by content type, publication year, and publishers. You can also sort by relevance or publication year or filter on a specific publication. There are some other things you can do as well. If you select the actions option by each result record, you can select from there the site option to retrieve that record in VivTech, RIS, API, and other citation styles. Um, I provided this as an example. Um, the eagle eyed among you will notice um, a little imperfection here. There's a missing space in the article title of this DOI. Um, I'd say most of our metadata records are good quality. But I've included this to show that they're not infallible and to um, demonstrate the downstream effect of tiny errors like this. Um, we get our metadata from publishers. We don't curate or correct it ourselves, um, but you know, in a case like this, we'd send an email to the publisher and say, hey, could you stick this space in there so everyone can get the correct title. All right, and from the Actions menu, you can, you can also select metadata as JSON to view a complete JSON metadata record. Um, this record contains almost everything we have for this item. There are some tiny bits and pieces meet, missing, but we'll be fin filling in all of these gaps by the end of the year. Um, we have, we collect multiple publication dates for an item. Um, we collect when the record was initially registered with us, when it was last updated, what member is responsible for the item, how many items we've identified as citing that record, and in any other metadata that's, data that's been included by the publisher, including funding data, text and data mining licenses, and update retraction or correction information. This data is also available directly from a REST API, which I'll be talking about in a bit. Okay, so I have a question. This is a good question, and it's not something I cover, uh, so I'll just um, answer it briefly. Um, I'm being asked if libraries can assign DOIs. Um, the library publishes technical reports written by professors and in the institutional repository, and they're asking for a DOI. So our, to, to register DOIs through Crossref, you have to be considered the publisher of the item you're registering. Um, and that doesn't mean that you're a traditional publisher, it just means you have the rights to host that item. It's not really owned by someone else. Um, so if you're publishing technical reports, they're not published anywhere and you want to anywhere else and you want to become a Crossref member, uh, we welcome that. We do have some libraries that are publishers um, and that assign DOIs through Crossref. Our other user interface for matching DOIs to citations is our simple text query form. Um, it's a really simple way to prop populate a reference list with DOIs. It's free to use but requires registration. Um, honestly, it's not the most beautiful form, but it gets the job done. Um, it's it's uh, been around for many years. 
Uh, to use this, you cut and paste a list of DOIs into the search box, hit submit, and fairly quickly you'll get your reference list back with the DOI links included, uh, which uh, can be cut and pasted back into a research paper or manuscripts. Um, not all items have DOIs, so not all references will be matched, but it does a pretty good job of finding a match if it's available. Um, this tool is free but requires registration just because we have to uh, keep an eye on the usage per user um, for various reasons. Um, so behind the scenes with this form, we have a tool that breaks these references up into parts, um, sticks those parts into an XML query and queries it directly against our system to find a match. So now I'm going to talk a bit about our REST API, um, which is the best way to retrieve large amounts of metadata. Um, this API is publicly available. We don't place any access restrictions on it currently, although we may do some rate limiting when needed if, if uh, the system is overwhelmed. This AB, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this API is used by some types of organizations I mentioned earlier to enhance their metadata-driven services. But we're finding um, that individual researchers are using this API as well. They use it to connect research outputs to funding or clinical trials. Um, they use it to identify text and data mining license information. Uh, they use it um, to um, identify things that don't have ORCIDs assigned. It's in the, the, uh, we find they use it in ways that we don't even anticipate, which is great. So this API can give you a good overview of what content we have metadata for. Uh, you can start with something very general. We have, um, actually I made this uh, slide uh, a few weeks ago, so we have now have over 8,500 members, but at the time we had 8,415 members. 89 plus million records, 66 plus million of which are journal articles. So as you can see, we most, uh, are the majority of the content we register is journal articles. Uh, we've got 10 million book chapters. Um, you can um, use this API to filter by which records have ORCIDs, which records have status updates like errata or retractions, um, which records have funding information, uh, which records reflect research funded by a given funding organization, um, and you can sort by publication dates, and of course you can see which items have text and data mining licenses, like with the query in the example. You can see we have around 25 million items with licensed data supply. Um, there are 352 types of licenses registered with us. Um, there are 25 million plus items that have full text links, and those are links within the metadata that can be used for text and data mining. And you can also limit queries to a single journal if, if a researcher or if you want to get some information just for a, a, a single journal or book or conference proceeding. You can do rough queries on using terms. Um, we don't collect keywords in our metadata. We do collect abstracts, but we have a small amount of abstracts, so you can't, if you're doing a keyword search with our API, you can't really consider yourself to be searching the text of what we have. You're really searching the titles, <laughs> the title data we have. Um, but, you know, obviously that, that has a lot of value in itself. And you can get, you can see how many records there are. You can get all of those records. You can get all of those records provided by a given publisher. Um, so I want to finish up by plugging our support for content negotiation. Uh, content negotiation allows a user to request a particular representation of a web source, and DOI resolvers use content negotiation to provide different representations of metadata associated with DOIs. Um, Crossref is by far not the only DOI registration agency. There's a number of them. Um, Crossref Datasite and Medra which is a, um, a DOI registration agency that provides a lot of uh, support to publishers in Europe. Um, we all collect bibliographic metadata about uh, the works we link to, and we make that data available through content negotiation. So 
At Crossref, we provide XML and JSON as metadata outputs. But if you have a DOI and want to retrieve the metadata as big, big text RDF, as XML or Turtle, or as a formatted citation, for example, you can do that using content negotiation. Um, we'll be sending around the slides soon, and I've, um, I've got a couple of questions I'll, I'll um, get to. Um, but when we do in send around the slides, I've included this uh, short list of resources that I've talked about in my slides. For those of you who want to dig into this a little bit um, more, we also provide email support. Um, so you can contact us at uh, support at crossref.org with any questions or if you want to be pointed towards some more resources. Okay, so someone's asking if Crossref provides an API for the simple text query form as well. We don't, unfortunately. We, um, the simple text query form, we license the reference parser that breaks apart the citations. We license it from Inera. It's a tool they have called XStyles. Um, we, uh, I, I think we, we don't, so we can't really provide an API because then we really be providing unlimited usage of their tool. Um, we, we've, um, we've made some advances in our own reference parser technology, so we hope that at some point we'll be able to provide some kind of API. So I know there's, there's a need for people to kind of send us format references and get them back with a DOI, much like the simple text query does, except for via an API, that would be really useful. So we're aware of that and it's something we're working on, it's just not something we have available right now. So someone's asking me to um, clarify uh, how Crossref and the other DOI registrations work together. Um, so uh, I, which I'm a little bummed. I had thought about including a slide on, ab about that, but I, I didn't want to um, talk about too many topics, so I cut it out. It would have been really useful. But basically, um, the DOI is a standard that is uh, maintained and established by the International DOI Foundation. The DOI resolver itself is um, managed by uh, an organization called CNRI. They're based in Reston, Virginia. Um, and Crossref and Datasite and Medra and uh, Wenfang Data and uh, Japan Link Center, they are all DOI registration agencies. There's a number of other DOI registration agencies outside of the scholarly communication uh, community as well. And so if you're a DOI registration agency, that basically means that you will register a DOI and a URL with the DOI resolver on behalf of your members or the community you, you represent. Um, and because you, metadata is important, a lot of the DOI registration agencies obviously collect metadata, but that's kind of outside of the DOI standard and outside of the, the international DOI uh, foundation um, purview. And that's kind of something we do on our own. Um, we're all nonprofits and we all tend to get along and work together. We do a lot of collaborating with Datasite, for example, um, but our systems aren't really connected 100%. Um, we've teamed up to work together on content negotiation with Datasite and Medra. So any content negotiation requests are, you know, we kind of collaborate on responding to them. Um, the metadata, the APIs I've talked about are REST API and the tools we use for looking at metadata. They are exclusive to Crossref. But one of the challenges is that we do have different systems. We collect different metadata. We have different metadata schema. So it's, um, we aren't, and, and to some extent we serve different communities, so we don't really connect all of these different interfaces and databases together. Okay. 
Okay, they had a request to explain why open URL is uh, limited. Um, so our open URL query resolver, it works like any other open URL resolver. You can feed in basic um, bibliographic information and get back um, some basic metadata. With our open URL re resolver, you can use it to retrieve all of the metadata provided by Crossref. But you can't, um, because it follows the open URL protocol, you can't search by anything beyond the defined open URL um, parameters like author, name, um, ISSN, et cetera. All right, I think that's all the questions we have. If you have any follow-up questions or anything needs clarification, please feel free to reach us out, out to us at support at crossref.org.